Welcome to worship at St. Paul Church in Linnitz. I'm Robert Wallace, Associate Pastor. In the Gospel reading today, we have two texts. One is about Jesus facing temptation. The second is about Jesus on the cross and his crying out, I thirst. In both these texts, we see Jesus fully human, created like us, and fleshed with the same feelings, emotions, and challenges. And in fully human, he shows us faithfulness. What do we have to learn by watching Jesus being fully human? That's what Pastor Rob speaks about this morning in his message. I invite you now to take a deep breath, settle in as we come together to worship the Lord God, to hear the message of good news as it comes to us through song, through message and Bible reading. I'm glad we can be together. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew within me a right spirit. Kat, can you turn me up a little bit more there? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm Pastor Rob, and welcome to worship this day. It is our first Sunday in Lent. That's why everything's in purple. And these are the 40 days where we, with Christians all around the world, uh, journey with Jesus to the cross. It's a season of prayer, of giving, of fasting, above all, of repentance. And uh, through, throughout, we're going to be hearing these words of the cross of Jesus. But regardless of whether or not it's Lent, we've all just had that week, that week in which we know we come ready to, to worship and to hand a lot of our hurts and our sins over to Christ. And so I invite us all to rise this day. We worship in the name in which we baptize, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people. 
turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pause for reflection as we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will. In your ways, to the glory of God. Hear the good news. By grace you have been saved. Out of great love, God sent the beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. And as he lives victorious from the grave, I declare to you that in his name your sins are forgiven. Amen. Together we join in singing in Jesus Messiah. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray. Lord God, our strength, keep us steadfast in your word. And when we fall, rise us, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Just a word about our readings today. The psalm, the psalm is likely the psalm that, and when we read the gospel, John uh, acknowledges. And so when we say the psalm today, I'd invite you to think about those as, as the words of Jesus from the cross. Our reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 3 and can be found on page 312 in the New Testament of the Pew Bibles. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. God. And now we'll read responsively Psalm 69. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me with your faithful help. Rescue me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Do not let the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from the servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies. You know the insults I receive and my shame and dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Insults have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. This is the first Sunday of Lent, and traditionally the reading is of Jesus' temptation. And so we hear from Mark's Gospel. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Also, a word from the Gospel of John. And after this, when Jesus knew that all was 
finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. We invite the children who are here in worship today to come on over to this part of our worship space to sit a little closer for a message for you. And we welcome and keep in mind those who are worshiping online, especially families at Kirkenwald this weekend with one of our Sunday morning groups called Talk the Walk. So a big good morning to you guys as well, joining us from afar. I'm glad to see so many of you who are here today because I've got something new to show you and you probably noticed when you came into the space today that things do look a little different. There's a lot of purple in the room, right? New purple banners are up. That means we're in a new season. The purple season is called Lent. And so I'm even wearing purple, thank you for noticing. Yes, I had fun with the liturgical colors as we call them. So we're in the purple season of Lent. It's what we do here to get us ready for Easter, really. It helps helping us walk for 40 days toward the cross. On that cross, Jesus says some words, really special, really important words. So what we're doing for this Lent here at St. Paul is hearing those words, a few words every Sunday. I have these new baskets over here that maybe you noticed, and they're purple. And on each basket are some of those words, the words that Jesus said on the cross. Every Sunday, we'll hear those words in the gospel, and then we, kids here together, are going to learn those words in a prayer. And that's because prayer is part of our Lenten focus, too. And so I hope that you all got this little pack. I have an example here, this prayer pack for you. If you didn't get one, I have extras. It has lots of goodies inside for you to walk this Lent with your families at home, including devotions and special ways to pray. But for our prayer today, we'll take this first basket. And the first basket has just two words that Jesus says. We heard them already. I thirst. So I've turned these words into a prayer for us and put them on a prayer card. I'd like to teach it to you. I'll say it. You can kind of follow along with your arms because it has some actions. Then we'll do a little repeat after me. And when we close our time together, we can all say it, the church as well. So here's how it goes. Dear Jesus, on the cross you said I thirst, but sour wine was given first. Help me see what others need. I will serve them as you lead. Could we try repeating it after me and doing the actions as well? So it goes like this. On the cross, oh, you got it. Okay, we don't even have to repeat. We'll just all do it together. On the cross, you said I thirst, but sour wine was given first. Help me see what others need. I will serve them as you lead. Wow, very good. So what this is designed for you guys to do is take one of these prayer cards home with you. Let this be a prayer in your homes, maybe at your mealtime or at bedtime or when you wake up in the morning taking those words that we heard from Jesus on the cross and putting them into a prayer. On the back of the card, every week I'll have a different activity that you can do. For this activity, you see a cross. It's an empty cross. As you pray, you could trace the cross with your finger. That's one idea. But every week of Lent, I will also give you, boys and girls, your choice of a colored pencil. And you can keep the colored pencil, the color that you choose. I'll put them here for now. And so maybe what you'd like to do on this cross is draw or color in some things that you need that you pray when you're talking to Jesus. So we're going to close our children's sermon by doing this prayer one more time. Everybody can join in, congregation as well. We'll use our hands that can help us remember the words. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, on the... Okay, let's try it together. Can we do it? Okay, we're going to go together. Here we go. On the cross... You said, I thirst, but sour wine was given first. Help me see what others need. 
I will serve them as you lead. Amen. I hope that this prayer blesses you and your homes and your families. Boys and girls and all congregation, these baskets will be up here so you can take a card, pick your colored pencil, and of course there's children's bulletins too. So come on up. Don't forget your card. Here you go. And then pick your color that you'd like today. You don't have to give the pencil back. It's yours to keep every week. You can pick a different color or the same, whatever you like. I thirst. These are the words from the cross for us today. I hope, though, you all got to watch the Super Bowl last weekend. It was a good game, and there were lots of celebrity sightings, including our favorite Pennsylvanian. For those that didn't pick that up, I'm referring to Taylor Swift. And also, again, advertisements. There's always lots of good advertisements during the Super Bowl. And this year, the one that really stood out to me was the commercial about Jesus, the He Gets Us commercial. And I've been thinking all week about how Jesus gets us, especially because the word this week from the cross is, I thirst. And I thirst is this declaration, this admission by Jesus that He's human, that He has basic biological needs like the rest of us. And that, again, he is, he is thirsty. So I want to reflect with you this day on, on the humanity of Jesus, what it means that Jesus is, is human, like the rest of us, he gets us, but also to, to, I think, shine some light on the ways in which Jesus is not just human, but, but truly human, in the best possible way, truly human, and then enables us, too, to be truly human. Well, when Jesus acknowledges that he thirsts, he's on a cross, and that admission that I thirst is also an admission that he's about to die, right? That he's about to breathe his last. And one of the things we all have in common as humans, whether we're rich, we're poor, we're young, we're old, we're sophisticated, we're simple, is that eventually we're all going to die. This is just to be human is ultimately to die, and Jesus, too, is taking on mortality, but one of the things also is that as humans, we're not only going to die, but I think we're often very much afraid of death. Right? To be human is to, to be anxious, to be in terror of, of death. This uh, last week was Ash Wednesday, a reminder that, again, we're all going to die. From dust you were made, and to dust you shall return. And in my first congregation, there was a woman who... Uh, every year she would come to Ash Wednesday worship, but she never wanted to have the ashes put on her. She had to come because she sang in the choir, but she would sit there while everybody else came up. You see, she had buried three husbands, and I think death was just too real for her. She didn't need a reminder of it once a year. Again, I get it that as, as humans, there's a sort of um, a terror, a trembling before the reality of death. And Jesus, too, Jesus acknowledges that, th that this death is going to be difficult. He refers to this throughout the Gospels as this cup, this, this difficult thing that he's got to go through. And in fact, he asks God the Father, can you take this away from me? So Jesus, like the rest of us, isn't excited about his death. Yet, yet Jesus is willing to do all this. And when Jesus goes to his death, he exhibits not only a fear of death, but also a courage, a willingness to take it on. And the reason why is because Jesus has faith. And you could argue the whole rest of the gospel, Jesus hasn't quite had to have faith yet because Jesus always was able to handle the situation. 
But in this case where Jesus, like all of us, is confronting his death, he cannot resurrect himself. And God the Son now needs God the Father through God the Spirit to raise Jesus up to new life. Jesus cannot do the resurrection on his own. He needs to die, ultimately surrender everything, trusting, believing that God is going to raise him up. And in this way, Jesus becomes truly human in that Jesus trusts the Lord in all situations, even in his own death. And this is how God intended it, that in the garden, God made humans, and, and God wanted them to live day by day, trusting God and trusting God alone. And really, all of Scripture, the, the people, just like us, some days they trust, and some days not so much. And it's this up and down struggle where humans aren't as faithful as we're supposed to be. But, but Jesus here, even in the face of his own cross, even in the face of death, remains faithful. He reveals his true humanity. I want to offer, though, that, that Jesus, too, through his death and resurrection, invites us to be truly human as we confront our own deaths. The cross I'm wearing is actually from the, the third of that woman's husbands, the third person that she had to bury. His name was Stan, and he was a pastor. And uh, he was very sick at the end of life, and so I was asked to visit him. And, and I went, and it was actually Good Friday. And at this point, Stan was in that kind of in and out of its zone, hadn't spoken, hadn't eaten. We knew, again, the end was very close. But I came, and, and when I came, it was clear that uh, although he was groggy, he was able to focus on me. And that we started to have this connection. And so I, I asked him, I said, Stan, are you afraid? Are you afraid? And... For the first time in two days, he spoke and he said, afraid. Why would I be afraid? At that moment, everything about him that made him a strong and vital human was, was being taken away. He was hooked up. His skin was pale. His, his organs were failing one by one. Yet he was so truly human in that moment as he was trusting God in spite of everything that God would redeem him. You see, as, as Christians, we can take a dive in that deep end of the pool knowing that Jesus has already done it and Jesus has promised to raise us up now. Humans, yes, the real humans are afraid of death, but the true human, Jesus Christ, and then those of us who trust this promise are those who are able to confront death with a bit of courage while trembling still. And so one day when you find yourself and you're, you're saying to that loved one that they need to let go, words you don't even want to say yourself, that it's okay, it's okay, you can let go. Or that moment when you can't even respond, but you can hear those words from, from your loved ones, and they're telling you that it's okay. It's okay that you can, you can let go. You, again, can know that you're just going into the deep end of the pool, following your Lord and Savior, who's already done that and has risen, and it'll raise you up to new life. So again, as, as humans, we are afraid of death, but there's a way in which Christ, truly human, has that courage before that ancient of foes. Another thing that we have as humans is a capacity for empathy. In fact, it's hardwired in us. When we see somebody who is sad, we have what's called mirror neurons. And what our brain does is our brain actually looks at their face and mimics the face then and then says, what am I feeling? And then feels what they're feeling. Again, we are wired for empathy as humans and this also explains why when we suddenly move all of our communication away from this and to this or to this, and it's mediated by AI, that suddenly all we get is hatred, right? Because we're, we're missing that, that deeply human thing to look at a person and understand, I was so mad at you, but as I look at you and I hear your story, I'm starting to get where you're coming from. So again, to be human is to have compassion and empathy, but, but what often happens for us as humans is that our, our compassion has, has a boundary. As humans, we're really good about building walls among each other across language, race, tribe, political stuff, uh, the whole thing. 
we're, we're good about building boundaries. And we typically have a lot of compassion up until that boundary. And our compassion kind of stops. You know, the He Gets Us commercial is almost like it's been a Rorschach test to, to see how people respond. And, and so many of my friends that are really progressive, they can't stand the commercials because they don't like the people that made them. And then my really, really conservative friends don't like it because it seems like Jesus is tolerating sin. And again, we are just so good at fighting each other, at building boundaries, at building walls. But Jesus shows us what it means to be truly human. And Jesus looks beyond those walls that we have. For when he cries out, I thirst, he doesn't say, I thirst as a man, I thirst as a Jew, I thirst as a progressive, I thirst as a conservative, I thirst as a law abider, I thirst is his cry for all of humanity. In that, Jesus is recognizing that all of humanity all of humanity as he's lived with them, that they need a savior. And Jesus looks at each one of us as broken yet beloved. Again, Jesus looks at each one of us, regardless of those walls that we've put up, he looks at each one of us as beloved. What this means then for us to be truly human is to dare to look beyond our own comfort zones. And to recognize that that person that we truly don't like, the person that we've been told is other, is bad, is stupid, is vile, that they are somebody for whom Jesus Christ has died. Again, the person we cannot stand is the person whom Jesus, and even if they had been alone on the earth, would have still died for them. This weekend is President's Day weekend, and really of the two, I'm much more fond of Abe Lincoln, in part because by the end of his life, Abe Lincoln became an American prophet, and his words just drip with scripture and religious imagery, and he understood that slavery was this moral evil that God was punishing, was breaking. But, but more than that, Lincoln also knew that even the people that he was waging war against were still humans that they were still people that loved their children, that wanted the beautiful sunrises. And so he would again appeal again and again to, to see the better angels in other people. To be human is to have compassion, but compassion that finally stops at the boundaries that we put up as humans. But to be truly human is actually to see beyond that. And that's actually how it all ends. If you think about where this all goes in the, in the book of Revelation at the end, it's an image of all of humanity across tribe, across language, across time. And they're all together, all of these cultures of the world, and we're all in one praising the creator. In the end, when we are truly human, we will be united worshiping our creator in spite of all the boundaries that we put up again and again and again. So yes, what does it mean to be human? It means to be compassion to a limit, but to be truly human is to extend beyond that and recognize that we're all part of one broken humanity that has needed and has found finally a savior in Jesus. The last bit of the sermon, though, I want to leave a little bit more open-ended. I think it's a bit more for interpretation. And that is the action of giving vinegar to Jesus as he says, I thirst. If we look at this from a human lens, this, this might simply be that somebody cries out, I thirst, and like all the other times we hear somebody complain about something in life, we hear the cries of somebody suffering, we decide we don't have the, the time and energy and resources to actually address their need. We just kind of want to get it off our plate, get it away from us. And so somebody, instead of actually slaking the man's thirst, just gives him something that's convenient that really won't work, which is vinegar. But what if we look at this from a, a truly human perspective? For it is truly human to use the hands that God has given us to help other people. Again, it is truly human to use what God has given us then to help other people from the beginning to the end of Scripture. And this is what Jesus did his whole ministry. You see, in Roman times, there was a, a mixture of vinegar that they would give to soldiers. It was sort of like the Mediterranean Gatorade. 
And it was this mixture of wine and vinegar that they would give to soldiers to revive them in battle. And you, you can't help but wonder, maybe somebody heard this man crying, and, and in Jesus he saw that, that this was a, a true human, the best of what humanity is, who is innocently suffering for others. And, and he knew that he was fighting, again, this ancient of foe death, and he wanted to strengthen him, to let him go one more round. And much like the angels that were, were attending to Jesus in his temptation, here in, in Jesus' hour of temptation, again, a human comes along and does the truly human thing of giving him, giving him this, this fluid to revive him, that he can say one more word, that he can have strength for one more noble breath to breathe his last I don't know. I don't know whether we need to look at this in a human or truly human way. Likewise, this week in your life, there are going to be people who are going to come to you. There's going to be all sorts of people near and far who are crying out that they thirst. They thirst physically, emotionally, spiritually. And will our response be a human one? to ignore or at best try to just brush it off and get it away from us as quickly as we possibly can? Or will freed, freed from the fear of death, freed from the boundaries that we have and the limitations on compassion, will there be a truly human response where we hear their cries and we open our hands and do the truly human thing? of helping them in meeting their need. Amen. together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and is buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Holy Jesus, we remember knowing that whatever happens in our lives, you never abandon us. You have invited us to call on you in prayer. Still our hearts that we might not just speak boldly to you, but also to listen to you. Give us clarity with you, that you will and your kingdom in our lives. Together we pray. that you are human like us. You know vulnerability and the power of death. You understand what it means to be vulnerable. Be with those in distress. May this congregation be a place in which people feel safe to lay down their burdens before you. May your hand of comfort reach out and console those we name both aloud and in our hearts. Together we pray. Lord, listen to your children. for peace in our world. After two years of war in Ukraine, the world is weary. The news and images from the Middle East both break our hearts and unsettle us about expanding violence. We pray for the children impacted by this violence. We pray too for victims of violence in our country as we grieve another mass shooting. In this world, overwhelmed by challenges and fears, give us hope. Let us pray. be with you always. Let us share the peace with each other. I invite you all to be seated for some announcements. Again, a warm word of welcome to those who are visiting with us. There are blue visitor cards. You can put them in the offering plates in your way out. Also, again, warm welcome to those who are uh, at the retreat watching with us online. Welcome. We know it's going well over there. 
So this is uh, the beginning of the Lenten season, and so uh, this Thursday night will be our first of our midweek uh, meal and prayer times, and that'll be at 545 in the social hall, and then 645 in the sanctuary. Vicar Kim Billy Todd will be leading uh, a worship service that really allows us to more prayerfully reflect on these words. Another way to sort of uh, do reflection on a daily basis uh, is with these torn journals. I think we've given already away about 150 or so, but we still have some more, so feel free. And even if you don't use it every day, that's fine. Just an opportunity to ground ourselves in the word this Lent. Uh, also, on, thir- on Sunday mornings, we again, we're doing a mass, kind of a small group, common ground experience in the social hall. I thank all those who have been participating in that. And there are two ways in which uh, we could use volunteer help this Lenten season. And the first is that uh, we are looking for some additional light and sound people, if that's something of interest to you. And uh, our youth director, John McCormick, is organizing weekly Wednesday morning breakfast for the youth, and we need some people who can make food. You actually don't have to interact with the teenagers, you just have to feed them. So um, that's kind of be fun. Uh, Lastly, as we prepare to take forward our offerings, I do want to say a word of thanks, and there'll be a lot more coming out about this, but but this week we um, were able to pay off, uh, or last week, the bridge loan uh, on the solar panels and lights in the sanctuary, so we have entirely paid off that project, really. That's just wonderful, so I thank you all for for your generosity for that. Again, there'll be more coming on that, but at this point, I invite us all to rise as we uh, present our gifts. your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Indeed, it is our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, through Christ. And so the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, after they had eaten, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we do this, we proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And in that hope we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, truly human, through his death and resurrection, makes it possible for you and me to be truly human. That we might have faith in the face of death. That we might have compassion when we see the face of human need irrespective of whom that person is. May the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.